We are living through the fastest technological takeover in human history, and it's accelerating so fast that most people can't even process what is actually happening. AI started as a fun thing that we are all just using when the release came of ChatGPT in November 2022. And this created a ripple effect that's changing the tech industry forever. Companies are racing to integrate AI into every single thing that they do. New AI tools are launching daily. Entire industries are being rewritten in real time. And people are quite frankly terrified. And here is what I'm seeing in my inbox every single week. Should I even buy learning new skills when AI might just replace everything. I feel like I'm falling behind, but I don't know what direction to even take. It's career paralysis on a massive scale. But here is what most people don't understand about this AI revolution. While everyone's worried about AI taking their jobs, the same AI industry is creating the largest infrastructure boom in human history. And at the center of this boom are three type of specific engineers who aren't getting replaced by AI. I'm Suleiman. I've worked in tech for a decade. I run my own AI cloud security consultancy. And through my academy, I've helped more than 500 students learn cloud and AI. In this video, I'm going to answer whether you should learn AI, cloud, or data engineering in 2025. But first, let me address the elephants in the room. Suleiman, why should I spend months learning these skills when Sam Altman says that we're so close to AGI? When Tesla's building humanoid robots? When AI seems to be getting better at everything humans do? I understand. The ground is shifting beneath our feet. Every week, there's another headline about AI achieving something that seemed impossible just a few months ago. AI that writes code better than junior developers. AI that creates videos from text. Massive layoffs by big tech virtually every other month. But amongst the panic is something that most people are missing. There's a massive gap between today's AI and AGI, which is AI that can think and act like a human and maybe actually replace us. Right now, as it stands from what I've used, AI can't really generate or debug its own code reliably, even Claude 4.0 Opus. It's not even close to replacing software engineers yet, despite what software engineering benchmarks might tell you and all of these AI CEOs. It's it's easy to get carried away by what Sam Altman is saying or the hype that they're creating for venture capitalists to pour investment into. Now, the reality is that you have to pull back the curtain and really follow the real money. Because while everyone's paralyzed by fear, something unprecedented is happening behind the scenes. The new infrastructure boom. Project Stargate, the largest infrastructure investment in human history. $500 billion, not million, but billion. And this isn't just one project. Microsoft, Meta, Google, and Amazon plan to spend over $320 billion in 2025 on AI infrastructure alone. And when we talk about AI infrastructure, what we mean is that these companies are building out completely new data centers, which Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, calls AI factories. And that's what I'm getting at. Every single one of these factories needs real talented engineers who understand how to build, maintain, and optimize this infrastructure for new generation of applications and platforms to be built on. So while people are worried about AI taking their jobs, AI industry is creating the largest demand for technical talent in history, specifically AI, cloud, and data engineers. And you've probably been thinking about these careers completely wrong. But before we get to that, let me just make sure that we are all on the same page about what these careers and skill sets really entail. Last Black Friday, something incredible happened that most people never heard about. At exactly midnight, 143 million people tried to shop online at the same moment. Now, 20 years ago, this would have been a digital Armageddon. Servers will be melting, websites will be crashing, and these customers would all be very angry. But not a single major site went down. Not Amazon, not Apple, not Walmart, not Target. At 11.55 p.m., cloud engineers at AWS were watching their dashboards. Traffic was normal, and five minutes later, that exact traffic spiked by 50,000%. But here is the key part. Their systems automatically detected the surge and spun up over 10,000 new servers in just seconds. And when the shopping frenzy ended at 3 a.m., those exact servers vanished like they almost never existed. That is cloud engineering, the digital infrastructure that everything else runs on. Netflix, Meta, Airbnb, Uber, all use Amazon Web Services or AWS to run and host their products or services. The engineers that run these infrastructures can make anything between $100 to over $250,000 a year. But here is what 
starts changing everything. This year, something new stressed these systems like never before. Every ChatGPT query uses 10 times more computing power than your Google search. Multiply that by 100 million daily users, you can imagine the scale that these servers have to run on. But all of that computing power is useless without the right data. Now, three months ago, a major retailer called me in panic. We have 10 years of customer data, they said, but we can't use any of it. Their data was everywhere. Customer purchases in one system, website clicks in another, email interactions in a third, returns data on an Excel sheet on someone's laptop. Now, typically businesses have tons and tons of random unstructured data. And this is the chaos that data engineers solve. Take Spotify. Every play, every pause, every skip, and every replay, billions of daily actions from 600 million users. Data engineers built systems that process all of this in real time, organizing the chaos into patterns. They create pipelines. Think of them as assembly lines for data that collect information from hundreds of different sources, clean it up, and organize it into formats that can actually be used. Data engineering roles typically start around $100,000, with more experienced engineers earning $180,000 or more, but organizing data is only half of the equation. What transforms that data into real insights and intelligence? Now remember, when Facebook started recognizing your friends in photos, that moment when you uploaded a group picture and it knew everyone's names. That was AI engineers teaching computers to see. Now, traditional software follows specific predefined rules. If a user clicks this button, show them this page. AI systems are different. They learn patterns from massive amounts of data and they make predictions. When Netflix knows you love Stranger Things before you do, that's AI engineers who taught algorithms to understand human taste by analyzing billions of viewing patterns. An AI engineer's job is teaching computers to recognize these patterns and make decisions. AI engineers Engineering positions start between $120 to over $300,000. It's definitely one of the hottest jobs in tech right now. Now, most people see these as three separate career paths, but they are wrong. And let me show you exactly what I mean. When you order an Uber, here is what happens in just three seconds before you see a car on your screen. The first second, cloud infrastructure receives your request. AWS service process your location, scan for available drivers within the 10 mile radius, and then check the current demand. If 50,000 people have just left a concert, the system automatically spins up more servers to handle the load. Then the data pipeline kicks in. They are pulling in real-time GPS data from every single phone, analyzing traffic patterns on every street, checking historical data for that specific location and the time. And all of this gets processed and organized in milliseconds. Finally, the AI models take over. They calculate optimal driver rider matches, predict if surge pricing is needed, estimate arrival times based on the current traffic, and then they determine the fastest route. And your screen just shows you that the driver is arriving in four minutes. Now, if we remove any of these components, then the entire system fails. If you don't have any cloud infrastructure, the app will just crash when you have more than a certain amount of users. If you don't have any data pipelines, well, then the AI is flying blind it can't match riders or predict anything else. And if you don't have AI, then you're back to manually assigning cars and dispatching them to customers. This isn't three different systems working together. It's actually one system that requires all three different skill sets. And this is exactly why companies have stopped hiring specialists and started hunting for engineers who understand the complete end-to-end -end picture. And here is what's happening in the job market right now. If you are just a data engineer, then you're competing with thousands of other candidates. If you're just an AI engineer, there are tens of thousands of other applications for every single role. The same is for cloud engineering, but not as much. But what if you are a little bit different? What if you are a data engineer who understands cloud infrastructure? What if you are an AI engineer who knows how to productionize models and deploy them to the cloud? And what if you are a cloud engineer who understands how to secure AI infrastructure and AI models? You've suddenly separated yourself from 95% of the competition. Now, most engineers pigeonhole themselves because they can't see what is coming. They are still thinking in terms of the old career model. For decades, we all followed the same path. Junior, mid-level, senior, lead, architect, maybe even manager. You climb the corporate ladder, you get promoted, and then you just repeat. But that model was designed for a world where technology was changing very slowly, even though technology was still moving fast. But this whole new world requires a completely different approach. Instead of thinking vertically, you need to start thinking horizontally. Instead of going really deep into one thing like data AI cloud, you need to go deep into multiple connected things. And I call it the asteroid shape. Think of it like this. You've got one spike, which is your deep cloud expertise, 
series, for example, AWS, you've got another spike, which is data pipeline mastery, and your third spike, AI and ML deployment skills. And the core holding all of this together is understanding how to connect technology to business value and business outcomes. This is exponentially more valuable than being just great at one thing. So the big question, should you learn AI, cloud, and data in 2025? Now, absolutely. These are the three best domains for 2025 and beyond. But what you want to do is you want to start with one domain as your foundation. I recommend cloud engineering because it's the infrastructure that everything else is built on. And you also get exposed to so many different areas. So you want to focus on a major cloud provider like AWS and then master the fundamentals, compute services, storage system, networking, security, and now AI. Like I said, you get exposed to lots of different areas and then you can specialize and build more deep expertise in an area that interests you the most and no other role role gives you this. Only cloud engineering gives you the exposure to architecture, DevOps, security, infrastructure's code, operations, containerization. These are all cloud engineering skills and disciplines. So once you've got that, then you want to add your second spike. So if you started with cloud, then go and add AI skills next. Learn how to deploy and scale machine learning models. If you're currently a data engineer, learn cloud infrastructure because virtually all modern data processing happens in cloud environments. If if you started with AI, go and learn how to build data pipelines that feed your models and the cloud infrastructure that scales them. Think of this like the 80-20 distribution. 80% deep expertise in your primary domain, so maybe cloud, and then 20% working knowledge of the connected areas. Now, you're not trying to become three different engineers. You are becoming one engineer who understands how to fit all of these pieces together. This creates compound learning where each new skill multiplies the value of what you already know. And from there, you have to learn to connect your technical capabilities to business outcomes. To understand how technology decisions impact costs, revenue, customer experience, and competitive advantages in the marketplace. Now, this business integration skill is what separates the engineers making a few hundred thousand dollars from making three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars or more at big companies like Netflix. Now, look, I know this is scary at times. The pace of change feels overwhelming, and it's natural to feel uncertain about what's coming next. But here is the reality. You can't just put your head in the sand and hope that it all goes away. AI isn't slowing down. The infrastructure boom isn't stopping. This transformation is happening whether you are ready or not. The question isn't whether you should learn AI, cloud, or data engineering skills, because deep down, you already know that you should. The real issue is that you are fearful about the things that you cannot control. What the job market will look like in two years, how fast AI will advance, what new technologies will emerge, whether companies will still need human engineers. I personally see a future of AI powered humans, but here is what you can control, your skill set. As you start gaining these skills, as you start beginning to understand how technology actually works, that paralyzing fear starts to disappear. You stop feeling like AI is this mysterious force that's going to replace you. And you start seeing it as a powerful tool that you know how to work with. You go from being afraid of the future to being part of building it. The opportunity is right here. It is right now. So as always, I'm rooting for you and good luck.